I'm Donna from the St. Johns County Public Library System, and I'm here today with Sandy Arpin, and we're going to talk about the St. Joseph's Mission Schoolhouse that's housed at the Mandarin Historical Society in Mandarin. Oh, so thank you for joining us today. Hi, Sandy. It is so cool to see this historic building here, and I wanted to talk to you about your involvement with the Historical Society. When did that begin for you? Well, it actually began when the Historical Society started. We were charter members of the organization and we just did a little bit of volunteering during our very busy years with our children growing up and work and so forth. But after I retired in 2011, I became more involved and uh, have been on the board um, since then. Well, I have heard a lot about your involvement and a lot about the things that you've made happen. And it's my understanding that the Mission House was moved here in 2015. That's right. Were you involved with that? Yes, yes. That was a, that was a big project for us that year. How was it offered to you? Well, uh, there's a little story before that. Um, we had wanted to get this little building because it's the last remaining one room schoolhouse in Duval County, as far as we know and it was located on Mandarin Road, about three miles from here. And in 2008, we actually had an effort to try to raise the funds to move the building here and restore it, but we weren't successful. That was a time of recession, as you'll recall. I do remember that. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, in 2015, the property owners that owned the building at the time were going to sell their property and they approached us and said, if you'd like to get this schoolhouse, this you better do it now because the next owners may not be willing to sell it. And we put out an appeal to the community and it was just like all the pieces fell in place and there was much generosity from many places and we were able to um, raise the funds to move it here. Well, I know that we can go inside today, yes. so I'd like to go inside and take a peek. And when we're inside, you can tell me more about the functions of the schoolhouse. Okay, that'd be great. Oh, Sandy, thank you for bringing me inside. The inside of the schoolhouse is so beautiful. It must have looked really nice back in the day when these children came in to just sit on benches and learn to read and write. Well, we, um, yes, that would be very nice. Unfortunately, we don't really know for sure what the schoolhouse looked like inside. So we used our imagination for the time period and for the fact that the sisters were very poor. Um, they didn't have many resources. And so hopefully they did have benches to sit on and, uh, or they may have sat really on the floor, we don't know. They certainly didn't have school desks. They certainly didn't have a lot of supplies. You know, they used what they could use and what they could put together themselves. So this was kind of our idea of maybe what the schoolhouse looked like inside. But it is the original building, so when you look at the windows, you look at the floors, you look at the siding, all of that is all original to the building. So what year was this building built? It was built in 1898 wow. for $5,000. Oh, that, wow, that's probably a ton of money in that time period. I wanted to ask you how the nuns came to do this for our community. Well, the Sisters of St. Joseph were an order of sisters that resided in La Puy, France. And the current, the, the current saying back in 1867, there was a bishop here in the area that um, was responsible for the Catholic Church from Savannah all the way down to St. Augustine. The Civil War had ended by 1867, and he decided that he was going to go back to his hometown, which was the Puy, France, and recruit Sisters of St. Joseph specifically to come to America to teach children who'd been enslaved um, before, this, before the emancipation. And that's what he did. He went back to the Puy. He asked for volunteers. He apparently had 60 volunteers. He selected eight. And we do have photographs of those sisters here that we could look at, and I'll tell you more about them. Well, I will share that with the people who watch this today. That is so interesting. I can't imagine being a woman way back then and agreeing to travel, which 
travel was not really comfortable back then, all the way to America to do this task. That is so interesting. Let's look at the nuns. Uh, the photographs that you're looking at right now are the eight sisters of St. Joseph that were recruited by Bishop Thoreau, and um, their journey to America was quite interesting. They had to get on a ship and come across the Atlantic Ocean in the middle of hurricane season in 1867. They were very ill the whole way over. Um, they got to America, came to Florida, and um, they had prepared a mother house for them in St. Augustine in what is now the um, Father O'Reilly House. It's a museum and it's operated by the Sisters of St. Joseph, but they lived in the attic of that building that still exists in St. Augustine. The sister in the center, Sister Marie Julie Rosat, she was the sister who was assigned to come to Mandarin. Their very first school was in St. Augustine. That was where they taught the first students um, in America. They had to spend about a year learning English before they could start teaching school, but their first students were there. Mandarin was their second school. Before they were done, they had, there are where Sisters of St. Joseph started schools all around the state of Florida. Jacksonville, Savannah, even down to Miami, Tampa, you know, all over the state. So they really made a huge impact on the state. But the sister in the middle was the one who was assigned to come to Mandarin. And um, she was in Mandarin most of the time that the sisters were here. They kind of went back and forth. She became ill and they had to leave and then they came back, that kind of thing. But um, she's buried at the St. Joseph's Catholic Church Cemetery. And so uh, Sister Marie Julie is still here in our community at the cemetery. Well, I'm, I'm glad that she has stayed with us. I spoke with someone the other day who had been in St. Augustine, and they indicated that um, some of the sisters were down there at the, um, is it the La Luce Shrine? And I think that the Catholic Church has made a huge impact on this area, and brought a, we have a lot of that history. Yes, yes, and their original convent, the building is still there, like I said, where they, where they were when they came. But now it's a, a very large complex that the sisters have, including an assisted living facility. And the sister that wrote the book called Beyond the Call, that told us all the stories about these sisters through their letters that they wrote to France when they were living here, um, Sister um, Thomas Joseph, uh, is, is still there. And so we use her as a resource for our research. One of the other stories we like to um, tell our visitors when they come to the schoolhouse is that the sisters weren't the only people who were here in Mandarin teaching the black children who had been enslaved. Um, there are quite a few other schools and we'd like to point them out on this map that we have here in the schoolhouse. One that a lot of people are familiar with is the old, what is now the Mandarin Community Club just a mile from here on Mandarin Road. And it was um, built originally by the Freedmen's Bureau and the first, uh, the first building burned down, the second was built with Harriet Beecher Stowe's help in raising funds to build that building. And it was used as a schoolhouse for blacks and whites, where this building itself was only used for the education of blacks, but there was segregated education. And in that schoolhouse, it was done by a wall in between the two, the two rooms. Um, so that was one of the schoolhouses. Another was one that was up here on Orange Picker Road, about a mile from here. And it was a public school, and um, it was used for the education of blacks before segregation. And another was um, in Edisto, which was a, a large African American community out um, off of St. Augustine Road. And the people who settled that community came here from the Gullah Geechee area of um, the lowlands of South Carolina. And they had a school there during the same time period that the school was teaching. So the, the sisters were a big part of the education, but they weren't the only part. We really like to make sure people understand that as well. Well, Sandy, I really want to thank you for your time today. I could come here and spend hours because the grounds are so beautiful and the history is so interesting. And I want to thank you for your time. I do want to tell my viewers to feel free to like, share, and comment this little recording that we've made. 
and you can also see it at SJC Library Vid on YouTube. So thank you very much for your time and you have a great day. Thank you.